Hello there, Explore Mentors. This is MakerJ11, and welcome to part four of the internal combustion engine video series where we turn this old refrigeration compressor from like a freezer into an internal combustion engine. Now, as you remember from part one, what we're going to be attempting to do with this project is only use basic tools. So we're going to be using a hacksaw and a power drill, and that's all we're using for this whole project. This is the progress so far. As you remember from part three, what we did is we manufactured this pretty rad head out of an old Intel heatsink. So we cut it up, drilled a couple holes in it, and then tapped the spark plug right into it by just threading it in pretty much. Actually, some of you guys were speculating in the comments that it might fly out of the head because it's not threaded in very good. I actually hope that'll happen because that would be a pretty spectacular failure. In part two, you might remember that we put the ports in. So we have an intake port over here and an exhaust port over here, and that's just two holes in the cylinder and that's going to allow for fuel air mixture to enter into the cylinder and to exhaust. In part four, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be encasing the crankcase. So we're going to be taking this piece of sheet metal that I got out of a, like the back of a radio or some equipment, and it's, a, it's about, it's pretty thick aluminum, and what we're going to be doing is cutting that up and manufacturing some type of an enclosure for the crankcase. So as you remember from part two, where I explained how an internal combustion engine works, you might remember that when the piston is going up, and it's sucking in fuel air mixture because the carburetor is actually mounted on the crankcase. It's creating a vacuum, sucking the fuel air mixture into the crankcase, and there's a little check valve that will block it from going back out. So it's sucking it in, and then as the piston comes back down, it's now pressurizing that fuel air mixture because it can't exit out of that check valve. It's, egg it's, it's compressing that fuel air mixture in the crankcase, and then as soon as the intake port opens, the fuel air mixture that's compressed in there rushes into through the into the intake port and fills the cylinder up with a new charge of fuel air mixture. And so that's very important to have a sealed enclosure over top of the crank. So that's what we're going to be working on this video. We're going to be manufacturing that out of some sheet metal and gluing it on there with JB Weld. All right, so I've got a rough shape cut out in cardboard, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, and that looks pretty good, actually. Doesn't look like the crank is gonna hit it, so I think we're good. All right, so here's my piece of aluminum that I'm gonna use, and it's probably about 3 16 inch thick. It's pretty thick, actually. I'm wondering if it might be too thick, because I might not be able to bend it very easily, but we'll see. All right, so I'll just line my template that I made up right on the edge here, so I already have a nice flat edge. That should work. Alright, so I sanded this thick anodized coating off of it. To hopefully I make the JB Weld stick a little bit better. And I also sanded all the sand off my sandpaper. No good anymore. So now I gotta bend this piece into kind of a circular shape so that it fits around here. We'll give this a try and see what happens. Just give her the old tappy tap tap. Alright, let's see if that'll work. Darn it! I bent it the wrong way. Duh! Bend it the other way. As they always say, measure once, hammer twice. Alright, now it should be the right way. Oh yeah, that ain't too bad. Hammer really helps the fitment. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. Okay, so here's a little problem that I just thought of. If I put, if I JB weld this on here, I can't exactly take the engine apart because I can't get those nuts off. So what I'm thinking to do is to drill a hole down here, mount this, this nut on here, and then use this bolt as a plug. So then I can reach 
one of these guys through there to unscrew or screw those on if I ever want to take it apart. Hot things are hot. Okay, so let's test to see if this hole over here that, I'm, that I just made is actually going to work. So, yep, we can just about reach that bolt. Let's test the other one. Oh yeah, that's perfect. This plate is gonna sit right on here and I'm going to have a hole through here, well, probably more like a notch um, for the intake passage or transfer passage. That plate is gonna need to sit kind of flat on there and it's not going to currently. Alright, so we have all the surfaces cleaned off and nice and sanded. We cleaned them off with isopropyl alcohol. Now we just have to mix up some GB Weld. Alright, it's all coated in glue. All messy. Stick it in there and put some more glue on. So I'm still going to need this bearing piece, and I can also use that to hold this plate down, which will be pretty handy. So I'm going to have this, like that, and I've got that all notched out there, it's pretty centered. And then this is going to go right on top, like that. And this is still on the, on the ground surface on that shaft, so I think it should work just fine. Yeah, that'll work. Close enough. Good enough for government work. To leak pressure, so I need to somehow seal that up better. So what I'm thinking is to take this little motor apart, get something similar to that, and put that on top of there. There we go. So there's the back of the motor off. Here's the rotor. There, I think that'll work just fine. Alright, so we've got that nice and coated in JB Weld. So let's uh, put it on. Here you can see the crankcase is pretty much all done. Just waiting for that glue to cure, so tomorrow morning I should be able to sand this whole top down, make it nice and flat so that we'll have a nice seal there. And then this is going to be our cover, so we'll be able to cut that out tomorrow morning, hopefully. All right, it's the next morning, and it's all nice and toasty from the light. Okay, so now I need to sand this all nice and flat. So I've got a nice piece of aluminum here, and I'm going to put this tape this piece of sandpaper on here, I think. That should work pretty good. Give it a shot. Okay, so here's the crankcase, pretty much all done. So it took a lot of sanding to get it all nice and flat here. Put it together, um, so here's our crank. And then we have our cap. So let's screw that on there, and then we can 
try to figure out where we're gonna cut this out. Make a nice scratch around here where we want to cut this out. All right, so I've got some type of a shape here marked out, and this is gonna be a little another ear here for another bolt at some point. Okay, so here's the plate pretty much done, um, although we still need to make this channel here. We've got a transfer passage that transfers from the crankcase to the intake port. Looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is make a little cover for that. So I've got some sheet metal here. Something like that should work just fine. Okay, now let's bend it into the shape that we need. All right, so we've got a cover now for the transfer passage. Alright, so we've got our crankcase all encased, we got our crankcase cap, now we just need a gasket to seal it on there. So I've got my cork gasket that I bought at the auto parts store, and so let's cut out a piece of this. So we got some type of a gasket there, and I think that will work just fine and dandy. I've got the bolt that fits in this nut, so now I just gotta make a plug. Sweet, we have a plug. So let's try assembling it now. So there's the piston in, put some oil on that. Let's drop that in there, there it is. Let's put that in. Nice and easy. Come on, a bit over. There we go. So I've got the access plug, let's put that in. First we need to put some Teflon tape on it so that it seals real nice. I can just screw that right in there. Perfect. All right, so I actually think we're ready to put the rotor back on, which will be nice. Got the head back on, we have all that stuff back in. So I think we're time to put the seal on there and then put our cover back on. Now hopefully the crank doesn't bind when we tighten this down. That's my one concern that it's going to bind because it was kind of binding before we had the gasket on there. Oof, yeah, that's binded. Binding! Ah, there we go. Okay, so we need another bolt right there. Good thing I left that flap on there. Oh yeah, that helps so much. It doesn't bind anymore and we can get the gasket nice and tight over here without it binding. a lot of messing around with those bolts. I got it so it's not binding, but the gasket is still tight, so it'll make a seal. All right, so we've made it to the end of part four of the internal combustion engine build series. We've made this very nice crankcase, which turned out a lot better than I actually was expecting. We have a nice plug down here, so we can, if we ever need to take the piston out, we can. It's not too big of a deal. And then we also made a cover for the crankcase. I'm guessing about two more parts before we get this to run because we need a carburetor and we need uh, some type of ignition system. And then we should be able to have it run. So figure probably part eight will be where it's running. But yeah, anyways, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. As always, thanks for watching and keep experimenting.